Hi everyone and welcome to our workshop today, Designing an Accessible Course Syllabus. The course syllabus is an essential component of your course and it should be precise, clear, and accessible. A syllabus is often the first means of communication between you and all your students. A well-designed accessible syllabus follows universal design principles for learning and benefits all students. In this workshop, you'll be provided with some tools to help you create a well-organized and accessible course syllabus. I'll be your presenter today. My name is Amanda Smothers. I am the Teaching and Learning Coordinator and I'm sharing some of the responsibilities of the Online Learning Coordinator in this uh, Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning at NIU. I will be taking questions throughout and at the end of the presentation. So if you have any specific questions related to what we're covering at that moment during the presentation, um, just feel free to post those to the chat thread. I'll discuss them as they come up or you can use the raise hand feature and I will call on you and you can use your microphone to state your question. Either way, whatever works best for you. So I just want to get to know uh, a little bit about who is here today. So in the text chat, just tell us all your department or your division, your role. So are you an instructor, are you a professor, are you a TA? Um, and then explain what you hope to get out of the workshop. Um, and everybody has entered their name when they've logged in, so we will be able to see who your name is, so you don't need to repeat that information. But I'll give you a couple of minutes just to do that. So share a little bit of information about yourself. And to open up the chat, you'll click that little purple button in the lower right hand corner, and then you'll click on the chat bubble, which is the first icon that'll pop up along the bottom. And then you can type where it says say something, and you can either click the enter key on your keyboard or click send. All right, great. We've got a couple people who've posted so far. So we've got someone from, I think that's engineering, correct? Um, learning how to design a good syllabus, always great. And then another instructor from curriculum and instruction department. Um, we've got sociology. Um, oh, and that's a good point. Uh, learning how to make an effective syllabus that would work in hybrid or face-to-face -face methods. That's great. And you can use the learning management system. So you want to use technology regardless of what modality you're teaching in. So it could be hybrid, it could be face to face, it could be fully online. Um, but you want to give your students access to the syllabus. You can print it out and hand it to your students um, if you're in a hybrid or a face to face course. But you also want to have that on Blackboard learning management system um, and you want it to be accessible. Because if you do have a student with, you know, a visual impairment or uh, blindness um, who you could give them that handout and they're not going to be able to read it. So you want them to have that um, that accessible syllabus online as well. Great. Thank you all for sharing. Um, and then just to try out this feature and have maybe a little bit of fun, I just want you to do a little bit of a check in. How are you today? Uh, so just share with an emoji in the chat. So if you see it underneath say something, you've got a B and I and a U that changes your font. Um, and then there's a little smiley face with a plus sign in, in its corner. So you click on that smiley face and it's got emojis. You can search for emojis at the top. You can scroll through them. You can click on um, the starter emoji at the top there that categorizes them. So just share an emoji for how you are today, where you're at uh, in the chat.
and I will participate too. So I shared one. A little bit of some crazy eyes there. Oh, snail. Nice. <laughs> All right, great. So that's something fun that you can do, you know, if you're teaching online synchronous session, just have students use that emoji feature to just kind of do a little bit of a touching base at the beginning of the class so you can kind of see where everybody's at. So I like to start workshops and um, my own synchronous class sessions when I'm teaching with that. All right, moving on, our workshop, workshop objectives. Um, so in this workshop, we're going to discover some practical strategies on how to define universal design for learning. So that was in the description of the workshop, what is universal design for learning, or UDL. Um, we'll distinguish between non-accessible and accessible elements of a syllabus, um, focusing mostly on accessible elements of a syllabus, accessibility. And then also learn to use just some basic tools and strategies to create an accessible syllabus. And we'll focus on one particular um, tool um, mainly, but we'll kind of touch base on a bunch of different things. And I'll give you some resources as well that'll help you delve a little bit deeper into creating an accessible syllabus. So it's covered up a little bit. So one of the things that I want to point out about um, Blackboard Collaborate is that when you upload a file to share, it turns that file into an image file. And so sometimes when you use, um, when you're uploading a PowerPoint presentation, it's going to turn each slide into an image of that slide. And sometimes things get a little bit mess messed up. So my picture here is covering up um, the title of the slide, which is Universal Design for Learning, UDL, there at the bottom. So, um, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is what is universal design for learning, and then we'll kind of segue into what that means for an accessible syllabus and then kind of branch off into just accessibility in general. Um, so universal design for learning has a few different components, engagement, representation, and action and expression, and we'll talk about these in just a minute. So to provide just a bit of background and some foundational information, we'll discuss universal design. Uh, universal design principles can be applied to the overall design of instruction, as well as to specific instructional materials, facilities, and strategies, such as lectures, classroom discussions, group work, web-based instruction, labs, field work, and demonstrations, and of course, uh, the syllabus as well. Universally designed curriculum provides students with a wide range of abilities, disabilities, ethnic backgrounds, language skills, learning styles, etc. So it provides all students with multiple means of representation, expression, and engagement. And for a little bit more about Universal Design for Learning, I'm going to share their um, website address in the chat here in case you want to learn a little bit more about UDL than we're going to be talking about today. So there is that, and you can click on that URL. And like I said, all of the web addresses, the URLs that I'm going to share with you in the chat here today, I will also share um, I will also share with you in a follow-up email. So that one that I just shared with you is cast.org, and that will give you a lot more in-depth information about UDL. Um, but basically, universal design for learning or of learning is the design of the instruction and that it's usable by all students without the need for adaptation or specialized design. So it's not an accommodation, it, but it benefits everybody and it's accessible to everybody. So it's basically kind of like building in accessibility to your course and just having that be um, uh, an integral component of your course design rather than designing your course and then getting an accommodations request and having to adapt your course materials. So in using U UDL, Universal Design for Learning, you won't have to do that or you shouldn't have to do that. So UDL, in other words, provides a framework to create and implement lessons with flexible goals, methods, 
materials, and assessments that support learning for all students. So we've got some scaffolding there to support. Universally designed curriculum provides for learners with a wide range of abilities, ages, disabilities, ethnic backgrounds, language skills, experiences, and learning styles. Learning happens in an interaction between an individual and the environment or the transaction between those two things. Um, it's social and contextual, and for that reason, it's really important to understand how a person's knowledge shifts and changes as they interact with their environment. So a single class might include students who struggle to learn for any number of reasons, including those that I've just listed there. So that's why, you know, we can't necessarily um, wait for somebody to reveal these things to us, but we want to design our courses and our syllabus, particularly the focus today, um, with a view towards making it accessible regardless of what uh, a student's struggle might be. So UDL in the syllabus, and I'm going to share another link here. It's udloncampus.cast.org slash page slash planning underscore syllabus. So there is that. Um, and you can see it's there at the bottom of the slide as well. Often the syllabus gives students the first impression about what they should expect from the upcoming learning environment. So if you create an accessible syllabus, then that's going to signal to students that the rest of your course is going to have a focus on accessibility as well. The syllabus is an opportunity for each instructor, each faculty member, each TA to set the class climate, to identify specific learning expectations, and to discuss options in accessibility. So here is the UDL connection uh, for the syllabus. So we've seen this graphic before. This was on the first slide of, of, the U, of UDL. Um, so we've got these three different components of universal design for learning, recognition networks, strategic networks, and affective networks. Recognition networks are the what of learning, the strategic networks are the how, and affective networks are the why. So with recognition networks, how do, that's how we gather facts and categorize what we see, hear, and read, identifying letters, words, author style, uh, or recognition tasks. Strategic networks, that's planning and performing tasks, how we organize and express our ideas. So that would be like writing an essay or solving a math problem. And then affective networks are how learners get engaged and stay motivated. So that's how they're challenged, how they're excited, how they're interested. So we want to incorporate these things. So with the syllabus, um, with the affective network, we want to provide multiple means of engagement. We want to outline the learning goals and objectives. We want to express the relevance of the content. Why is this content relevant to our students? And we also want to express or outline any opportunities for choice within the course. So is, are, do students have a choice uh, of any of the learning materials or assessments in the course? For example, um, are you going to give them a list of readings and they can choose a certain number of readings from that list um, to give them some choice in, in what they read? Or do you have multiple different ways that they can uh, show that they demonstrate that they've uh, reached course outcomes um, or mastered course outcomes? So maybe they have a choice of a final project. Uh, maybe they could write a term paper or they could um, have a video submission or a portfolio. So different opportunities for choice within the course, whatever those may look like. Uh, with the strategic network, we want to provide multiple means of action and expression. So use the syllabus to communicate regular routines to establish expectations. What is a typical class period going to be like? Or what's the routine of your class? What's the cadence of that class? Um, and then maybe the, the course as a whole. Um, another thing that you could do is to outline the timing and the format of assessments so that students know what to expect and then offer resources for the management of information as well. And then with the recognition network, we want to provide multiple means of representation. So be explicit about the ways in which students can access their content. So have multiple different ways that students can access content. For example, a textbook, 
slides, PowerPoint slides, uh, a course website, videos with closed captioning, audio, um, where to find background information, and multiple examples. So next we're going to talk um, about accessibility more generally. And all of this will, um, will be relevant to also universal design. <laughs> to, oops, sorry about that. That's my dog. I'm going to share um, a bunch of resources, um, but first I'm going to go through this and then the, the resources that I'm going to share, the links I'm going to share are this basically this list. I'm going to share the Americans with Disabilities Act statement, producing, developing, maintaining, using technology, etc. Uh, so show students when you're accommodating students, you want to include resources and statements that address students with differing needs. Um, and think broadly about that. So it's not just the Disability Resource Center. Um, that's one resource and one type of need. But we want to think more globally with what needs our students might have. Um, so the NIU campus welcomes all students, is committed to providing a range of specific student needs and accommodations. The U.S. Department of Education and Higher Learning Commission requires that all courses have a syllabus that's made available to each student enrolled in each course by the first class meeting. At minimum, regarding students' accommodations, all syllabi, at least on our campus, and I use, must include the Americans with Disability Statement. And with that statement, you can also add a statement requesting that students with disabilities contact you regarding accommodation needs. Um, they will need to get official accommodations um, through the Disability Resource Center, so you want to um, direct them there. But there are other ways that NIU accommodates its students. As you can see with this list of statements and resources, um, you could also include a statement that says something about how student success is important to you, that any student who has any circumstance that may have some impact on their work in the class and for which they might require special accommodations should contact you early in the semester so that accommodations can be made in a timely manner. And you can find the resources that are going to be the most helpful for them and the most useful for them in their success in your course. Um, if you have any anything else that you want to share with students, if you've taken any of the ally trainings at NIU, um, you know, you can include that as well. Um, so this is a great opportunity to show your students that you are an ally. So I'm going to share these links. So the first one is the Americans with Disabilities Act statement. So this is the statement that needs to go in all of our syllabi. And then the next link is the technology accessibility procurement policy. So it's producing, developing, maintaining, and using technology at NIU. And then next is the um, violence prevention website. Um, I think it was formerly the bystander intervention statement. So that is that link. And you can find all of these too just by searching NIU's website. Um, counseling and consultation services is another great resource to provide to students. Give them information about that. If you are teaching a face-to-face -face course um, and you suspect that a student might benefit from any of these resources, you might want to target um, those students for these resources, so give them, you know, a targeted resource that's in an email direct to them or um, you talk to them after class or before class. Um, and something that's very helpful is to also just walk them over to whatever office you think will be most helpful. Um, the non-discrimination, non-harassment policy is the next one that I'm sharing with you. And then the Disability Resources Center. Gender and Sexuality Resource Center.
I think I gave those two in like the wrong order, but um, and then trauma services clinic. So again, definitely provide these resources and any others, um, you know, veteran services, any any resources that you think might help students with different needs. Um, definitely include those in your syllabus um, or somewhere in your course. But the syllabus is a good place um, to also have them. So you might have them in a separate resource file folder or section of your course and then maybe also in the syllabus so that students have them in multiple different places. Um, and then again, don't, if you're teaching a face-to-face -face or hybrid class, don't hesitate to, you know, if a student wants to take advantage of a resource but doesn't know how to get started, direct them to where they can get that help or maybe even walk them over to that building so that they know where it's at. And if you don't know where it's at, then that's a good opportunity for you to find out too. All right, next we'll talk about inclusive statements for syllabi. Um, so there's other statements to consider, including on your course syllabus. Um, and these are just some of them. Uh, so the accessibility statement, multilingual student statement, name and pronoun statement. Um, so if, if your student, especially if they're first year students who may not know that they can change their, their name, um, their name to their preferred name, so that that shows up um, and change their pronouns, um, that would be a great statement to have and uh, show them where they can do that. Um, student sexual misconduct policy, undocumented students, and diversity, equity, and inclusion faculty toolkit. Um, so the, the NIU Office of Academic Diver Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion has established the online faculty toolkit, and let me share that with you here in the chat. Um, so they've uh, established that faculty toolkit where you can find a range of inclusive statements recommended to be included on course syllabi. So you don't have to make these statements up. Um, but it gives you the resources. The toolkit also provides resources to navigate classroom dynamics and create culturally responsive teaching too. And although not absolutely required to be included on your course syllabus other than the ADA statement, the Americans with Disabilities Act, including these kinds of statements can help provide a dynamic educational experience that expands the understanding of differences of cultures and identities with respect to the rich and diverse cultures represented on campus. So if our goal is to reach all students, um, then that is a great way to do it and to show that you are interested in all student success. So understanding accessibility, um, making your syllabus accessible. Accessibility basically means making sure that your content is available to as many people as possible. And that's especially those individuals with hearing, visual, cognitive impairments who often use assistive technologies. So we wanna make sure that those people, um, that every single student in your class is able to access your course materials and your syllabus particularly but all course materials in general. So beginning January 18th of 2018, NIU implemented a policy for producing, developing, maintaining, and using technology. Um, and that's the technology accessibility procurement policy. And I think I've already shared, yeah, I've already shared that up above, actually a couple of times in a row accidentally. Um, so you can access that already. It's there uh, in the chat. But all electronic and information technology has to be accessible to people who have visual or learning disabilities or who can't use a mouse or a keyboard. So that is an NIU policy. That doesn't mean that everybody follows that NIU policy. And there are a lot of courses, a lot of um, courses online, too many to police. But it is policy. So that applies to everything from online course materials to videos shown in class or assigned to be viewed outside of class, to web applications like MyNIU, to even copiers and printers. So even if you haven't had a student who is blind or deaf in your class, 
now is the time to make all of your course materials accessible. And the DRC, Disability Resource Center, can work with you to help make those your, your course materials accessible if you're unsure of where to start or how to do so, even if you know what you need to do, maybe you don't know how to do it. So they can work with you to do things like captioning videos um, and creating accessible documents for your course. So that includes Word documents, PowerPoints, PDFs, web, mobile, all of your content has to be accessible. So considering instructional universal design principles, um, some of the things that we need to think about when we're talking about universal instructional design principles are reading order, uh, heading styles, and we'll talk more about styles, heading styles in, in just a minute and how you might incorporate those into your documents. Um, table headers, tables in general, uh, not all tables are accessible. Uh, often screen readers will read from left to right, and so they'll read the, the, all the headings and then they'll read from, from left to right. So you have to look at tables and consider whether that needs to be a table. Can it be a bullet pointed or a numbered list instead? Um, so, so look at those, those things when you're designing your syllabus. Um, alternative text for images, so any image. It could be an image file alone. Um, it could be um, images within a document, images in a PowerPoint. They should all have alternative text that describes that image for someone with visual impairment. Um, simplicity, so keeping things simple. Um, color contrast, there needs to be enough contrast in the document for those with visual impairments to be able to see it. Um, so, for example, the best would be white background, black text. Um, but just making sure that you have that, um, that color contrast. And you can also fix non-accessible documents to be accessible depending on the type of contest. Um, so Yasin asked, how, could I show you an example how you can do that? So which specifically um, do you want me to show you an example of? We will be getting to heading styles in just a minute. So picture. Um, with a picture, depending on where the picture is at, um, depending on where the picture is at, um, you'll be able to usually right click on that image. Um, let me pull something up here. So I will switch from sharing the file to sharing my screen so that I can show you in PowerPoint, for example, how to add alt, alt text. All right, so you should be able to see my document here. So this is an image file. This is me, my portrait. Um, but I don't do a lot of image files in my PowerPoint. So you would, on your mouse, right click on the image and then you see this pop up here and then you can edit alt text here. So you click on that and then you can see what the generated description is. A person smiling for the camera. Um, so you can keep that or you can just do your own And then if you mark it as decorative, it will block out the alt text, so you won't need to do that. But it's just always a good policy just to give alt text for everything. Even if it's decorative, still give alt text, um, alternative text for it so that every student has access to every component. Um, so that's how you would edit the alt text and you just X out of that. And then if a student is using assistive technology to read out these slides to them, um, it will read out the alt text on the image. And so they'll know what, what the image says there. You're welcome. 
Um, so for tables, let me see if I can. So for tables, the, the ideal would be to not use tables. Um, ideally, we would use a bulleted list, for example. So let me just. So should be able to see my document here. Um, this would be a table. So to insert a table, you would go to insert table and then choose however many columns and rows you want. And then usually you would use this. You put your headings across the top and then you fill out your table. Um, so instead of doing that, because what will happen is assistive technology might read that from left to right. So if you've got all your headings, it's going to read out all of your headings. And then it's going to read out the whole second line here and then the whole third line. And so um, it's not going to be as clear to someone who's just listening to it that this heading goes for all of the stuff underneath it because it's so removed from how it's being read. So instead of that, um, we would recommend using like a bullet pointed list instead. So bullet points here. So we've got you know, a heading and then underneath that we've got content and content and then we need another heading and two for whatever would be in in that table. So that's just an easier way to make sure that your content is accessible. All right, let me find where I left off here. Um, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so make sure that all of your content is accessible. There's also some accessibility checkers. Um, Word has an accessibility checker, for example, um, and I believe we'll see screenshot of that in just a minute um, or I can can show you um, do it's Department of IT's resource on that uh, so considering instructional universal design principles um, so again you can can fix non accessible documents to be accessible so you don't have to start from scratch when you are working on making your, your documents accessible, when you're make, working on making your syllabus accessible. You don't have to start from scratch. You don't have to start a whole new document and repopulate everything. There are strategies that you can use to make that accessible. So I, I mentioned this before, but using an accessibility checker. Um, you can do a quick check, a full check in Adobe Acrobat X Pro. Um, so not just in the reader, but you have to have Acrobat X Pro. And so that's for checking the accessibility of PDF documents. Um, but the Disability Resource Center can also check that for you. Um, and then the Accessibility Checker Utility in Microsoft Word is another example. So accessibility, again, make, means making sure that your content's available to as many people as possible, um, particularly those with um, disabilities. Um, so just make sure that you're you're always checking your content to make sure that everything that you're sharing with your students is accessible before you have a student who comes to you with um, an accommodation request because then you'll always be prepared for that and you won't be scrambling right before the semester starts to make all of your documentation accessible. Um, so Microsoft Word styles is how it's not just when you're creating headings in your document. Um, you're not just writing out a heading or typing out a heading and then changing the font to make it bold and larger. What you want to use is the styles tool in Microsoft Word. Um, and the reason why you want to use this is because that tool will enable um, your students who are using assistive technology like um, text to speech readers, um, it will prioritize things for them. So especially with your syllabus, 
when you're using these headings, students will be able to navigate through your syllabus, through those headings, to find the information that they want without having to listen to the entire document just to find the piece of information that they need. Um, and then it also uh, assists your other students, too, who don't use that assistive technology uh, in navigating your syllabus by using the navigation pane. So styles is in your, um, your heading there. So if you go to Microsoft Word, and this is the, a screenshot of the desktop application, which has a lot more features. And um, because you're associated with NIU, um, you can download the desktop versions of any of the apps for Office 365. Um, and then that will give you much more functionality with all of the apps, PowerPoint, Word, what have you. But this is on the Home tab. And you can see the styles are up there. You've got different options for styles. Um, you have normal, and that'll just be what your regular text will be. And you can set that. Um, you can change it. Um, heading one, heading two. So those are levels of heading. Heading one will be the top level. So that would be you know, you know a main heading for a section. And then heading two might be a subheading for subpoints or subsections. Um, and then there's multiple different levels. The only thing that will not show up um, in the navigation pane will be title. So you can give, you can use the title style, but it's not actually going to show up in the navigation pane, um, which isn't necessarily necessary. And I'll show you the um, technology, the, the accessibility course materials on Word in just a minute uh, online. So you can edit, as I mentioned, your styles. Um, there's preset settings for the styles, preset styles, um, and you may not like them. Um, so you can right click on any style and change it. You can modify it. That's the second option in the drop down when you right click on it. Um, or you can update it to match a selection. So if you want to highlight something and make that a heading, so you highlight your text and you want it to look like that. That's the style that you want. So you've made it bold and you've made it, you know, a couple points larger than the rest of the text and you want it to look like that. Highlight it, right click and then um, choose the option to update heading one to match your selection. So then that every time you use heading one, that style, it's going to match whatever you've just highlighted. All right. And then this is what I was talking about before about the navigation pane. So for every student, um, they can use this navigation pane to view all of the headings. So it makes navigating through the syllabus a lot easier. And you may need to show them, probably will need to show them this feature. Um, but it's going to make things so much easier for them once they know that it's there. And once you know that it's there, too, because then you can go through and check your headings, check the levels um, using styles. So to get to this point, you click the View tab at the top, and then you check the box under Show, which is the fourth uh, section from the left, and check the box under Navigation Pane, and that will open this up, and it will show you all of your headings uh, in a list there which makes it really convenient to find what you want. You can click on a heading and it'll take you to that spot in the syllabus. So that's um, universal. Uh, all students can benefit from you using styles in your syllabus because all students can find information easily. They can use either the navigation pane to find uh, the section of the syllabus that they need instead of having to scroll through and search. Or if someone's using assistive technology, they can skip ahead to a different heading using that assistive technology instead of having to listen to the entire syllabus read out loud to them and trying to find the information that they want. Um, so we're coming up on about five, uh, about 15 minutes left, and I wanted to leave plenty of, of time to um, have discussion or have uh, take your questions. But first, I do want to show, I'm going to post this to the thread here, but I'm also going 
to show this. I want to sh wanted to show this to you as a resource. Um, let me share. So this is um, the Office of the President, the Ethics and Compliance Office, has accessible digital materials. Um, and this is, I'm sharing the Word documents one because um, it's what we've been talking about, the styles, and that's what it starts with, the headings. Um, so it gives you, you know, some information about how to do headings, um, how to use lists. Uh, tables. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, how to use lists, how to insert a table, um, links, uh, using unique, meaningful link titles. So don't use click here or don't use the URL um, because then, you know, if you use the URL, for example, that's going to read out the entire URL if someone's using assistive technology um, instead of just saying admissions information link. Uh, and then they can choose to go to that link. Um, so this is what a meaningful title link is. So it, it's a title of the website, not the URL, and then the URL is attached to that. Um, how to insert images and provide descriptions or alternative text, columns. The accessibility statement for syllabi is um, here as well. So you can find that on this page too, in addition to those links that I gave you. And then here's the part that I really wanted to highlight, which is that you can check your accessibility, the accessibility of your document. Um, so under the review tab, you can click check accessibility, and then it shows how to fix different accessibility issues in your document. And then PDFs. Um, so here's just kind of a, a warning statement. Don't convert a document to a PDF until you've considered uh, these different things that HTML is actually the most accessible format. Um, so a lot of times we convert to PDF and then that means that our document is no longer accessible. Um, Word is the next most accessible format after HTML. PDF prints well, but is this document going to be printed? So you might wanna maybe switch over or convert it to PDF so that you can print it, but maybe that's not the document file type that you share in your online course. Um, and that the digital version of your Word document is secure. If someone presents a different version, it's been tampered with, your digital version is the correct version, so that's not really a, a good reason. Um, security isn't really a good reason to have a PDF file. But if you do need PDFs to make it accessible, you have to have Adobe Acrobat. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then you can also go to the other accessible digital materials on the page. So it's got accessible documents, teaching technology, online class sessions and meetings. There's a lot of different things on here. Um, and then there's also specifically related to syllabus, which is create an accessible syllabus here. So click on that. It gives you some examples of the documents there. Yeah. Okay. So any questions that I can answer for anybody? And you can either post in the chat or raise your hand to use your microphone. You'll just have to unmute yourself. So if anybody has any questions, any specific questions, you can share them now. I'll wait a couple of minutes to give you time to think. But if nobody has any any questions for us, then we'll just we'll end our session. But I want to give you enough time to do so. You're welcome, Yasmin.
I'm glad you find links helpful. And I, like I said, I will definitely send you a whole list of all of those links that I've shared throughout the presentation um, in my follow-up email. So you'll have all of them in one spot in one, one email so you can come back to them whenever you want or create your bookmarks. Um, that depends on where the movie is housed, Justin. So Justin's asking how you make movies accessible to all students. Um, so you would want to definitely work with the, the Disability Resource Center because if it's a YouTube video, for example, they can work with you on um, captioning that. Um, and then, you know, if you're doing like a, a lecture video, um, you can upload that to Kaltura. And Kaltura has an auto captioning feature and you can edit your captions on Kaltura too. So it just depends on where you're, you're getting that movie, where you're getting the, the video file from, or if you're creating it yourself. Hope that answers your question. Great, I'm glad that you're getting the captioning service this semester. And if you do have students who uh, need accommodations, need captioning for live um, classes, so live synchronous sessions, um, that's something that you definitely want to direct them to the Disability Resource Center, to the DRC, because they can assign them a live captioner to come to your classes. Um, you'll just need to add them to your Blackboard Collaborate session or your Microsoft Teams session or however you're holding that synchronous session um, so that they can uh, caption, live caption your lectures for your student who needs that accommodation. No problem. Any other questions or comments? Okay, well, I'll stick around for a few minutes just in case anybody thinks of anything. But uh, again, I'm Amanda Smothers. I work in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning as the Teaching and, Le Teaching and Learning Coordinator. And there's my email in case you need to email me directly, but you will get an email from me following up after this with those links. Uh, thank you for attending today's presentation. And if you have any further questions, you can either email me or stick around.